CBDCs, are we being played? Are we heading into another trap? Let's figure this out. Major move. We going all in. Like we got nothing to lose. We making moves. We making major moves. We making moves. We making major moves. We making moves. Making major moves. Warning. I'm not a financial advisor. Don't blame me or any other random person that gives you some money tips for any of your financial decisions. I provide information based on research that may guide you to taking a deeper look at a particular company. However, in no way am I suggesting to invest or not invest in that company. Your decisions are that of your own. I present information that is readily available on the internet and I piece together the story to create and provide a more holistic concept to create a bigger picture. This information is for educational purposes only. Ultimately, I'm a guy in a Spider-Man mask and you should not take financial advice or information from me. My father ain't around, probably y'all committing felony. My favorite rapper used to say, check, check out my melody. I want to live good. I should have sell stout full, full finger ring. Wanted a gold rope. All right. I want to thank you guys and welcome you back to my channel again. I'm Mr. Man here and I got some information to you regarding the uh, Canadian stablecoin from back in the day till now. And the three different blockchains that it, would, that it was tested on. Like tested on or utilized on. One of them has been dropped out. I also have information on um, Algorand, I have information on Stellar today, as well as the new CBDC network that the WEF have dropped and are utilizing within Davos. All right, let's get into this. By the way, this is take two. <laughs> so, Canada Stable Corp launches the QCAD on Canada back dollar, Canada dollar back stable coin. This, this here is on the Ethereum network being utilized by the ERC-20. So I'm sure that this project got dropped because they got some high ass fees. I remember buying uh, $50 worth of uh, this, this coin, SDX. That coin is being used in uh, Project Hel Helvetia, as well as another, coin, another uh, project. I don't remember specifically the other project name, but that's an initiative by the BL BIS and six company out in Switzerland there. Anyways, on Coinbase, I had paid $50 to try it out and move it. By the time it was all said and done and those gas fees were done, I got $13 worth of this. Thankfully, it was 0 0.0002 of a cent. So I was able to get some something of it. Jeez. Anyways, yeah, look into that project. It's a good project. I'm not recommending to buy it. I'm not recommending not to buy it. I'm just telling you what I had done after my research in that into Six Company, the BIS, and this project Helvetia. Continuing on. In so that was let's do this, let's do this properly. That was February. February 2020th. Now on December 2020th. Canada was like, yo, screw that. These fees are way too high. We're going to launch a QCAD on Algorand blockchain here. And I want to let you guys know, I was looking into Algo because one of the uh, one of my followers had suggested I should do a dive into Algorand. I said, you know what? Why not? So here I am doing a dive on Algorand. Canada has one of the first stable coins here outside of the US. This is back in 2020. This is three years ago now. Well, two and a bit. Two and three quarter, two and three quarter years, because we're just in the beginning of 2023. All right. So they announced a partnership um, between Algorand, the leading scalable, secure, and decentralized blockchain network, to launch a digital asset on the Algo blockchain. Stable Corp has been awarded on an Algo Foundation grant, and through this collaboration, will continue to grow the fiat-backed stablecoin cap capability on Algo. And will be the first non-US back stable coin to be issued on the network. By the way, I want to thank you guys for bearing with me. I've been away for a couple days here. Mainly because uh, on the 15th, today is the 20th now at 4.30 Central Savings Time. Uh, my dog had passed away on the 15th of January. So I had taken some time off for that. That shit was hard, let me tell you. That is still hard. 
And then yesterday on the 19th was my partner's birthday. So I was spending some time with her. So I thank you guys for uh, bearing with me here as I go through what life has to offer. You know, all I can do is roll with the punches and keep moving because if you stop, you're not making any progress. Moving on. This came out yesterday as well. National Australia Bank, so the NAB, to launch a stablecoin on Ethereum and oh, this Algorand, all right? So the NAB Bank will become the second of the country's major financial institution to launch a stablecoin. The top executive, a top executive told the Australian uh, Financial Review. The coin dubbed AUDN will launch on the Ethereum and Algorand blockchain later this year. I'll follow up once this thing drops. Howard Silby's NAB's chief um, innovation officer told AFR the stablecoin would allow customers to settle transactions on a blockchain in real time using Australian dollars. So I'm very interested to find out how this is going to work because there's going to be competing stable coins. I guess you'll have like the government stable coin. You'll have anybody else who can establish a stable coin and has the liquidity to draw when needed to fund that stable coin. Shit, I can make a stable coin if I want. I was actually thinking about doing that. I'm a real estate investor. And one of my ideas, I, I, yeah, I'll save that. I will save that until I, yeah, we'll, we'll get into that another day. All right, so continuing on with the algo news here. This here is called Agro Token. Tokenize your grains and pay anything you want. Anything you want. With our infrastructure, we provide options to make grain operations easier, more efficient, and safer. Grain operations. The only grain operations I know is walking to the grocery store, picking up some grain of some sort, loading that in my trunk, and then beyond being on my way. But now here, if you hold the algo token, you can hold the infrastructure to what actually happens in the background, from the farm to 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 um, processing to the stores itself. Now, and you can be a part of that if you own the infrastructure. As well as you can utilize this and pay whatever you want too. I'm not sure how that works yet, but once it's being capitalized on or once I take the chance, I can uh, report back to you guys on how this thing actually works. Unless somebody else knows how it works and you're willing to talk about it down in the uh, comments below. By the way, please like and subscribe to my channel. I don't know how it affects the Algorand. Not uh, the Algorand. <laughs> I don't know how it affects the algorithm, but... Just like and subscribe. You know, I'd love to have more people uh, follow me. I provide some, what I consider, fire information. And I'm sure you guys consider fire information too. That's why you keep coming back. And if this is your first time on my channel, welcome. Agro Token is the first global tokenization infrastructure for agro commodities. We create and secure frictionless ecosystem to make trading grains easier, more efficient, and more reliable. They got Argentina soy, Argentina corn, Argentina wheat, soy, Brazil soy, and Brazil um, corn as well. So, speaking on stable coins here, Canadian stable coins, here we have what's known as the VCAD. So, Stable Corp and Versa Bank issue Canadian stable coin VCAD on the Stella blockchain. All right, this is the Stella website. Hopefully, my. Um, my uh, title there, my top of my screen thing, my banner won't block that. If not, I told you, stellar. Digital banking leader, Versa Bank and Canadian blockchain fintech firm Stablecorp plan to commercially launch the, v v to the VCAD token. This is in 2021, by the way. A Canadian stablecoin that will be public and live on the Stellar network and be the first to be issued by a North American bank awesome um i would do believe we have that coin within our apps uh newton it used to be in net coins not anymore don't know what happened to it but we can convert our cash into this stable coin now no need for tether tether only works in i guess crypto world it has no use case in the real world itself so i can foresee that you know going down the, the drain there eventually continuing on with the stellar news here Ripple rival Stellar becomes CFTC's blockchain and digital advisor. 
Stella is not Ripple's um, adversary at all. They're not rivals. They're working in two different sectors, completely different. I keep hearing the term Ripple or Ripple looks after the back end. Stella does the front end. I want to say yes to that. However, they do co-mingle. So there is a crossover. There's a transition period between the two of them. So a gray area where they interact, like large interactions. So it's not just front end, back end, none of that stuff. All right. The Stellar Development, or SDF, will reportedly become a member of a new advisory committee to the U.S. CFTC. This, this SDF will be responsible for blockchain and digital assets in the relaunching body and will guide the CFTC on these issues. I find it ironic that, um, you know, you have Brad Garlinghouse taking pictures with the new, uh, what is she there, this... What's her position there? The, uh, the, the Asian lady in the CFTC. I don't remember her name. Jenny? Jenny? I want to say Jenny. I could have looked it up before I did this, but that, this, this portion is on the fly right now, just ad-libbing, and she happened to pop in my mind. Um, maybe I'll, I can provide the link or the name to her, sorry. Um, anyways. Stellar itself is, signal, is signaling hope for fruitful... Uh, work with representatives of traditional financial markets with JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, and BlackRock also joining the Global Advisory Committee. You hear who these people are mingling with? Ripple is in there too. Ripple is in there like swimwear with these same people. That's what I mean, that gray area. It's not front end, back end, whatever. As a decentralized cross border money transfer operator in particular, Stellar XLM wants to pay particular attention to the issue of remittances and stable coins. On this occasion, SDF plans to raise the topic of stable coins on the digital assets market and their application in real life, including humanitarian aid as part of their program, Stellar Aid Assist. The Stellar Aid Assist dropped in um, Ukraine to assist with the refugees. And that's in an initiative partnered with Circle, so Circle has a stable coin, um, USDC, which is utilizing the rails of XLM to send money to the uh, Ukrainian refugees. Continuing, this just further provides more information into the, um, the collaboration there for the BCAD stable coin between Versa Bank and Stellar. Moving on to the digital ID portion now. This I find fascinating, really, really fascinating, so fascinating that this thing, I guess, provides a healthy amount of fear, but also a healthy amount of intrigue. Intrigue to the point where I figured I would download the wallet here, the EID me, the digital ID, and check it out and fill out my information and put it in there. Because what they say is that um, they don't store the information on their hardware at all or in their cloud. It gets stored directly on the phone. It connects to their to their information, which connects to the government information. And then once all that information is confirmed and verified, it gets sent to your phone, and that's where it's supposed to stay as a closed ecosystem. I don't know how true that is. Um, all I can do is uh, hope and pray and find out. We will see soon. I'll let you guys know. If you don't see me on here anymore, you'll know what happened to me. The uh, the popo came <laughs> and got me, <laughs> or maybe it was the uh, the uh, the Chinese companies. <laughs> Anyways, going back to digital ID, this came out in 2018. This is a PDF put up by the WEF. Um, the known traveler unlocking the potential of digital ID for secure and seamless travel. All right, in collaboration with Accenture. Remember that name; it'll come up again. Sorry to point at you. I just, it's like you're there, you know. If you're someone I was talking to, I would maybe do the same thing. I probably wouldn't be talk, chatting with you in the mask. Or maybe I would. I, Whatever. All right. All right, all right, all right. Executive summary. All right. Here we go. Innovation is key to enhancing global competitiveness, mobility, and productivity. Technological advancements provide opportunities to make security for air travel more efficient while improving the traveler experience. They only brought up one example. There's several examples in terms of how digital ID um, 
will have use cases. And I'll show you that in this as well once I show you who the governing body of the digital ID is in Canada. I'm looking in for the US and the other uh, countries as well. Right now, I reside in Canada, so I want to know how this infrastructure works first. To all my Canadians out there, I guess you are blessed first. So this is the company here, the DIACC. The DIACC stands for Digital ID and Authentication Council of Canada. There's the website right there, DIACC.ca. That's where we at, the DIACC. Principal policy principles to maximize benefits for people, a shared European and Canadian perspective. Interesting. Interoperability. Digital ID you can use. DIACC is committed to unlocking economic opportunities for Canadian consumers and businesses by providing the faint framework to develop a robust, secure, scalable, and privacy-enhancing digital ID by an authentication ecosystem that will increase cost for decrease, decrease cost. If something was to increase cost, I ain't jumping on that for everyone while improving service delivery and driving GDP growth. Time will tell. We'll see where that goes. Anyways, continuing on. Here, the Pan-Canadian Trust Framework. This is an initiative with uh, BC, Saskatchewan, Ontario, New Brunswick, I want to say. Not every, not every province, but majority of the provinces itself. Here's a document and notice of intent. This is the intent of what they intend to do. I'm waiting for this one here, the trust registries. Excuse me. Which is coming soon. This notice was put out by the end of Q2, Q4 2022. Here's their uh, draft for the digital wallet recommendations. And here we go. Here are some use cases. All right. So they have healthcare as a use case. They have government services. They have commerce, purchasing. They have civic enactment, engagement, sorry. Finance, obviously. And then here. Digital ID is critical to Canadian inclusion and economic prosperity. Uh, maybe. Maybe. We'll see, I guess. I guess. Sure. Who is their team? Who is this lineup? Who's the board of directors here? Who is their lineup? We got Joni Brennan. She is the DIACC Council of Canada. We have Dave Nicholson. 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 He's a strategic advisor with McCarthy Tetro. Yes. Frank Garrigus. He is the VP of Digital Channels and Mobile for Everyone, TD. So we have banking members here too. I'm sure he's worked on the digital ID within the TD infrastructure as well. So he works within TD to connect with Canada. I'm sure they're going to bring all the information and innovation that they're learning here back to TD Canada Trust. That's how I believe that that's going to work. You have Secure Key here. This individual is probably fluent in um, security. There's uh, the province of New Brunswick over here. Again, I was telling you about that collaboration, the Pan-Canada Trust, I believe it was called. Uh, Neil Butters, uh, Interact. Interact is our, you know, debit, you tap and pay, that's Interact. Then we have Deloitte down here as well. We have Desjardins here as well. And Ontario Digital ID. We have TELUS, which is a phone, phone service provider in Canada. We have the province of Quebec here. What are these guys doing in here? VMO Partners, Accenture. Remember I told you to remember that name? Accenture. Accenture is a Ripple partner. All right? A Ripple partner. So that's intriguing to me. I'm not too sure how this is going to play into it, but Ripple does have their own digital ID infrastructure. I showed in another a previous video that was called Pay ID, and then a lawsuit had dropped on Ripple with the, was it the NAV? The, uh, an Australian bank, NAB, I believe it was. And so Ripple had gone and patented, patented, trademarked a new um, entity called PayString, which has to do with digital ID as well. Same logo, everything looks the same, except just the name change. Anyways, 
That's the Pan Canadian Trust framework for the digital wallet here. The purpose of this um, component is to provide framework that just digital ID ecosystem participants can use to assess the degree of which the, the, the digital wallets that are part of their respective ecosystems uh, uh, accomplish the following. And then they list those, you know, the bullet points of what they should do to uh, adhere to their framework or how they can adhere to the framework. So here we have here the PCTF digital wallet um, component overview. And you can kind of break it down further and go into the uh, property rights and intellectual property here. I'll go in there quickly. There we go. Digital Idea and Authentication Council of Canada. And they go into that a bit further. But we're going to continue on. That's neither here nor there. This is a slideshow from the DIACC. And um, accelerating the establishment of a world-class made for Canada, Canada identity identity ecosystem if i talk too fast let me know i don't mind slowing down but i'm not sure if you guys want a longer video or a short kind of video i you know put it down in the comments i'll read them and i'll take your guys advice and then we can try out you know different different methods different ways of doing it and see what works best for this channel i'm here to learn just like you guys are tell me what you want and i'll do my best to fine tune this channel to become the channel that we need and we want it to be All right. Delivering components for the Pan Canadian Trust framework through a strong collaborative effort. I told you who those provinces were already, okay? Setting the standards for rules and tools to establish platform for services delivery. Here's the framework. That's how it's going to break down verification of relationship so person to person that will establish trust through that relationship and that ecosystem same thing from a person to an organization or a company establish that trust and from an organization to an organization then they go into they go into um intersecting disciplines and they break it down a bit further to talk about the framework anyways here we go privacy security and choice drive Canadians' desire for digital ID. It is. I don't recall anybody asking me, but if that's what they say, they must be right. I doubt it. But, you know, whatever. Digital ID and Authentication Council of Canada research finds Canadian want digital ID that is user-centric and aligns with their values. I don't know what digital ID aligns with my values. Again, nobody asked me. You know, I never had the time to think about it. Anyways, moving on. This is an interesting report here. Canadian Digital ID Research done in April 2022, just last year. The Canadian perspective on digital IDs. A strong majority of Canadians agree that they should have access to the personal data collected by them. Which, you know, collected about them by the federal government, the provincial government, and private companies, which makes sense. Google has more information about me than I do. The federal government has more information about me than I do. I want to be able to have that information and I want to be able to share what I want to share and not share what I don't want to share. I, I do appreciate the fact that this removes the stranglehold from these companies in terms of them buying or selling our data without our consent. We have to consent automatically or else we cannot use their platforms. But with this new shakeup of things, we will then own the identification of ourselves, and we choose to share what we want to share, not the other way around. They tell us what we have to share, and then they can just riddle through your phone and take whatever the hell they want. Four in five Canadians believe it's very somewhat important, very somewhat, four in five believe it's very somewhat important that the federal government move quickly to enable a secure and a safe and secure digital ID. We do? Yeah, I don't know if I believe that. Nearly half of Canadians agree that the uh, injection passport used by the government fits within their personal definition of digital ID. Again, nobody asked me. Um, from what I see, I'm not a fan of that portion of, of this digital ID at all. 
at 50 percent that says nearly half why don't they say 42 percent it says, says it here why are you gonna say nearly half because it's not i wonder what their sample population was because they don't do that stats can be manipulative because you can have three people and two out of three people is what 75 percent so you can skew stats very easily all right everything's a stat 54 percent 21 percent 71 percent like does that mean six out of ten one out of one is a hundred <laughs> really anyways the meat and potatoes of this now let's jump into this so this is the uh the back information this is on their archive website here from 2017 anyways this living entity here the diacc's digital id wallet will be built on the back of hyper ledger fabric that is an ibm initiative built on the stellar rails of xlm so is it safe for me to say that canada's digital id will be utilizing stellar xlm i believe so until i see anything different that's all that's that's well at least that's the uh pan canada the pan canada agreement all right those particular provinces that we had spoken about here's a small short two minute video three minute video my apologies demo 2 is a birth certificate verifiable credentials issuance use case where a subject would obtain an electronic version of their canadian birth certificate from a central proxy service the proxy service validates the birth certificate information against the appropriate provincial vital statistics database and issues a corresponding verifiable credential to the subject's digital identity wallet. The transition to verifiable credentials in digital wallets will take many years as the population adopts this new format. There is a circular dependency in the adoption cycle for new technologies. Service providers may not adopt a new format until a sufficient proportion of the population has adopted that format, and individuals may not be compelled to adopt the new format until enough of the service providers accept it. The cycle will accelerate once a critical mass of the population and of service providers are on board. The purpose of the proposed functionality in this demo is to help to accelerate adoption by the population, even as the technologies and standards are evolving. This demo, prepared by Validate ID Solutions, Interact, and Axial, demonstrates a functionality integrated with existing provincial infrastructure for validating birth certificate information against provincial birth records and issuing a corresponding W3C birth certificate verifiable credential to a digital identity wallet. Subject Tamara Eustius wants to load her Canadian birth certificate into her digital identity wallet so she can use it in combination with other verifiable credentials to prove her identity for online transactions. Tamara validates her birth certificate with vital stats through the validation service and uses her smartphone wallet app to scan a QR code to create a verifiable credential and load it into the wallet. The following video shows Tamara's use of the validation service via a browser and her smartphone. Tamara enters the required information, such as given names, family name, date of birth, birth registration number, and registration date from her birth certificate. Why do all these government sites look like they're archaic, like the first edition of the internet? Anyways. and submits the holder request. The system returns the match result, indicating that the input matches a record of a live person in the provincial birth records. The list of attributes validated in this use case could be expanded to include additional birth certificate attributes that would help to authenticate the user. Tamara chooses W3C Wallet to identify the format of verifiable credentials she is requesting, and the system displays the QR code for her W3C Wallet. Tamara scans the QR code with her smartphone wallet app and responds to the authentication request. The birth certificate appears in the smartphone wallet and contains the attributes verified with the issuer. This functionality solves for rapid deployment of electronic birth certificates to all provinces, accelerates onboarding of the population to verifiable credentials, adapts easily to new digital identity technologies and standards as they evolve, adapts easily to provincial infrastructure rust out and modernization, a stepping stone to an evolving end state architecture and standards. The advantages of this method are no need to wait while standards and vital stats processes evolve, easily transition issued verifiable credentials to vital stats issued verifiable credentials at a time when vital stats policies and processes have changed. 
leverages existing provincial birth record infrastructure with minimal to no changes for rapid deployment. The challenges of this method are identifying the subset of birth certificates for which vital stats would issue a verifiable credential without a manual adjudication process. Sweet. Thank you for that. Continuing on, the last thing on the agenda now, the global CBDC real-time payment network launches in Davos. That was just yesterday. Leave it to the lofty information of the WEF to come up with the Universal Digital Payments Network. This, as the new cross-border digital currency payments portal made its debut yesterday, January 19th, today being the 20th, in the Swiss resort turned summit under the shortened UDPN moniker with the equally ambitious goal of providing global interoperability between regulated stablecoins and central bank digital currencies. As of this writing, 114 countries representing 95% of the global GDP are exploring to some degree the feasibility of launching a CBDC in their nation. So, now that you have the stats on that, what I want to say is I want to issue a bolo, be on the lookout, what's known as a black swan, for individuals to roll this out, for people to, the mass to accept, because there's a lot of people that don't want this. There's a lot of people that'll, you know, give pushback, not because they're freedom fighters, but because they're old and they don't want this stuff. They don't care about this stuff, you know, in their 30s and their 40s and their 50s and their 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, whatever the hell it is. I'm not saying 30 is old. I'm 39, turning 40 next month, actually, February 15th. But there will be pushback. So the way to do this, the way to move people collectively is through fear. And this initiative is known as a black swan. So be on the lookout for something that can potentially be a bad thing. There can be another, uh, you know, <coughs> sometime soon. Or there can be a furthering of a war between other countries. There can be a, a new, you know, something else that comes out that causes fear, uh, co provides a reason for people to say, I don't want to touch money anymore, not this physical fiat stuff. And I just want to use this and tapity tap, tap, tap until my heart's desire. All right. So be on the lookout for that. I don't know what it's going to be. I don't know when it's going to be, but also a date to note. The Fedwire rolls out with uh, ISO implementation March 20th, 2023. And then that's the low value payments uh, provider, which will be rolled out, I believe, which will be UBI in the States. And at that point, Canada will activate. And then again, on March 10th, 2025, at that point, it'll be the high value initiative. I believe it is high value payments or the HVPS. Um, but the R... The um, RTR and re RTS, RTPS will be utilized coming March 20th, 2023. I want to thank you guys for joining me. Um, like always, I appreciate you guys, and I'll catch you on the next one. Make it major moves. We going all in. Like we got nothing to lose. We making moves. We making major moves. We making moves.